blessing to meet with you again in the prophetic class. Amen. Okay. So I pray that you pick up the Spirit of God who impart you with something serious. Father, we thank you this morning. Bless us with your presence. Touch your sons and daughters. You have gathered nations here. I pray that Lord, you will speak to us in mysteries and you will give us an understanding heart, eyes and mind and spirit to understand the things that you will teach to us. For the things you say to us, some are those that we know. Some are also strange to us. But we pray that with your grace in the Holy Spirit, we will understand that which you are teaching us today, that we will be able to be different among my many thousands of prophets. In Jesus' precious name, I call it done. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Please have a seat. Understanding prophetic covenant. 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 Mind you, some of the things I will be teaching you, like I said in my prayer, are common to man, but some of them are mysterious. It will take only the Holy Spirit to bring you to alignment for you to be able to know what is it. Somebody shout amen. amen. Like you to follow me very keenly with your heart open, your mind, your spirit, ready to consume all that God has given to us today. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Glory to God. Understanding prophetic covenant. I'd like you to know that there is something has been wrong for years. And until there is a deep correction of that perception and that practices, we will not be able to see the manifestation of God's power. In a sense that we think to be called as a man of God a prophet, a pastor, evangelist is just an easy job that everybody can just jump up and enter into it. I would like you to understand that no, to be called a prophet is not any profession. It's not comparable to profession. It's not a profession. It's not what? A profession. It's not a job. So you don't just wake up to become a pastor or a prophet. No, there must be a divine call. Because the call of God is for you to be like God. The prophetic is a mystery that makes men to ascend into the throne of godliness. In other words, when somebody is anointed to be a prophet, is anointed to be a pastor, he has been separated from the norm of men. He is no longer a normal common person. He is not on career. He is not on profession. He is not a normal human being. If you are anointed as a prophet, I want you to take this note. You are not a normal person. You are not a normal person. You may be eating, you may be dressing normal, you may be behaving and doing everything normal. But I want you to know the moment you are called a prophet, you are called a minister, you are anointed and parted by the power of God, you have switched from humanity into divinity. Somebody shout out here. So you now have a dual citizenship. You have what? Talk to me. You have now what? A dual citizenship. You are an earthly man and you are also a heavenly man. Talk to me. You are now what? And what? So you now become a 100% spiritual and 100% physical. So I want you to mark this because the people of God are called ships of God. The church members are called ships of God. But the leader is not a sheep. The leader is now a shepherd. 
And you know clearly, sheep and shepherd are not the same. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Now you are getting what I'm talking about here. So once you are called out of the crowd to be a prophet, to be a pastor, to be a man of God, an evangelist, you must understand that your language changes. Your persona changes. The things that members will do and go free, you can't do that thing. You are no longer a member. You are no longer a child of God. Number one, you, have no, you are not a sheep. You become a shepherd. Number two, you are not a child of God. You are now a son of God. There's a difference between a child of God and a son of God. Somebody shout out here, you sir. Therefore, your perspectives of things are not the same. Your understanding of things are not the same. Your requirement of things are not the same. You must understand this mystery or else you are not qualified to lead. For you to be a leader in the realms of the spirit, you are no longer, even though you are a normal human being, it's like political power. When somebody is working with you like a brother, a friend, and he is not in power, you know, you can talk to him anyhow. But when the president is now voted by all, and we have all given him our authority and our mandate to be the president, from that day, he is now no longer a normal human being. The constitution protects the president than us. The whole entire police. So in fact, if we have one billion police in Ghana, we are protecting the president. You may think in the case, is they are protecting us. But let me tell you something. No. If there is anything happen right now, every police will leave every citizen and make sure to protect the, poli- the president of Ghana. Every soldier is to press to protect the president of Ghana. Am I communicating here? Why? Even though he is a normal human being, but the day we all voted for him to be the president, he now ascended into another realms of authority. He is no longer a normal citizen of Ghana. He is the first citizen of Ghana. He is the custodian of the land. In other words, apart from God, the most powerful human being in every nation, it's not a pastor, it's not a businessman, it's not a lecturer, it's the president. He can tell every pastor to go to sleep and everybody will obey. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. It, you saw in COVID time, hello, the president will just come and say, from today I lock Ghana. Everybody go to sleep. Nobody pass anywhere. Do you see any pastor challenging it? Talk to me, all these big pastors, all these big faith we have. Nobody. What are you talking <laughs> they will rent another house for you. <laughs> Praise God. They will just change your location. That's how powerful it is. So when it comes into the kingdom of God, the same thing it is. When it comes into the kingdom of God, when somebody is anointed to be a prophet, that's why sometimes because of lack of understanding of this truth, people think that pastors are too known. Oh, look at this pastor with protocols everywhere. Oh, my friend, listen. They are no longer sheep so once you become an anointed prophet, once heaven accepts you and the earth has no option than to guarantee your existence. Hear me, sir. You have, no, you have now left the place of a sheep. You are now a shepherd. Shepherd don't eat the food that sheep eat. The food, the bread that supply, that brings satisfaction to the sheep is not the same bread. The prophet eat. In other words, interpretations of things, valleys. The same way is this. It may be the same word, but how a pastor apply it is different from how a member must apply the word of God. There is a problem. There is an issue in the body of Christ. They combine the whole scriptures without giving the manual to the lecturers and to the shepherd. So the Bible is just one. There's a problem. They should have been able to decipher the food that the prophet and the pastors are supposed to eat. But here we are, we combine the whole food. So it will take a prophetic scientist to be able to decode the oppressions of the spirit, to show you what to eat, or else you'll be eating koshoko and you are still smiling. You are 
That's what is happening. Many of us have wrong interpretation, wrong perception, wrong activities, and wrong operations. No wonder churches are not growing in Ghana. No wonder you start a church for 20 years, you are still the same. No wonder you become a prophet for 15 years, you are still the same. No wonder many people are not progressing. How can you be a child of God, graduate from being a child of God into a priest of God? When you have ascended into the office of the kingdom of God and you still beg for bread and people do not have respect over you and you cannot command demons, you cannot walk in power and authority, you are still looking like a beggar. Something is wrong somewhere. You are feeding wrong. So many wrongs. So many wrongs. So many wrongs in the body of Christ. So if you are not careful, you will be eating wrong food though to think that you are a pastor. Hear me sir. The prayers of pastors are not the same like the prayers of members. The fastings of pastors are not the same like the fastings of members. Understanding of the word of faith is not the same as the members understand the word of faith. How a prophet should understand faith should be different from how a member should understand faith. How a prophet understands holiness is different from how a member should understand what holiness is about. How a prophet understands sacrifice should be different from how a member understands sacrifice. When you become a prophet, you have now left the realms of men. You are now operating in the realms of the spirit. Therefore, you do what spirit requires. Some of you think that you have been to Bible school. Some of you think that your pastors have been training you. No wonder. No church. No progress. But if you look keenly at the fathers, if you look keenly at the fathers, you will see that they are doing something that we are not doing. There is something they have known that they are not ready to share. And that has been one of the problems of the fathers. They know certain truth, but they are not. I pray that you, your eyes of understanding will be opened into things of the Spirit. Somebody, are you saying amen or amen? Amen. Praise God. Are you with me here? You don't do the work of God anyhow. The Bible says, Woe unto everybody that do the work of God. Of Biala Biala. No. You can't be doing the work of God like that. You can't be walking like that. Freely. No. So there are foundations. There are spiritual foundations required to be known. To be understood. Either you like it or not. As long as you want to flow in this realm, you must follow this dimension. You must understand things are not normal. Things are not normal. You don't fast 21 days like a member is fasting 21 days. No. You don't read the Bible. Praise God. Pastors are not supposed to read Bible. <laughs> we are supposed to eat the Bible. Somebody shout out here, sir. Pastors are not supposed to do what? No, you are not supposed to be reading Bible. You are supposed to be eating Bible. You consume it because it's the bread of life. You eat them. You eat them. And you don't read everything. That's why pastors are not supposed to be reading everything. Because the Bible is not the word of God. But the word of God is in the Bible. So if you are not careful, you'll be confused. You are too confused. Pastors are confused. The Christianity is confused. Pastors are confused all over the world. Sometimes when I sit back and I watch pastors, the way they are preaching, I wish I can say some things to them. But sometimes when you are replying, the people think that you are arrogant. So, I don't like replying them. I've stopped replying people. Praise God. The Bible is not the word of God, but the word of God is in the Bible. So if you are not careful, you'll be reading the word of Satan. And you will think you are reading the Bible, the word of God. Genesis chapter 3. Who was talking there? Was it not Satan speaking? So if you are not careful, you'll be reading Satan when they say God was speaking. Some of the scriptures were, you know, put there by Paul. If you go to churches, some big, big churches, the way they respect Paul. But many of the scriptures of Paul 
many of the word that Paul preaches was not correct. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. He preached wrong messages. And they wrote all of them in the Bible. Certain messages that are not good are causing more harm than good. Somebody shout out here, you sir. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. Paul preached a message there that I want it to be deleted from the Bible. How can you be preaching this message? What? When I saw, I got so much angry. I called Paul. He didn't pick the phone. I said, I'm calling you. He didn't pick the phone. I don't maybe he was sleeping that time. Praise God. Let's go. Want to go? Let us. As many servants are under the yoke, count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. What, how, can you write, how can you write this scripture? What, why are you moving? Because you don't understand. How can a man of God let us as many servants under the yoke whom Jesus have delivered and Jesus said that we are not under any yoke we are not slaves Paul is saying that all those of you are slaves you should continue to honor your father, your master so that the name of God will not be blasphemed, how? how can a man of God preach this message that we should continue to be slaves and this is put in the Bible and you are happy, you have been reading it and pastors have been using it to teach don't you think this one was a slave message? And this is a New Testament. That Paul was. Read the tree. Where's your tree Bible? Who has the tree Bible here? Read the tree Bible. Or give me another version. Somebody should give me another version. Somebody should look for tree Bible for me now. Quickly. That's what pastors need to take your time to eat. Don't rush. Don't just read anything and don't just listen to any, anything anybody is saying. Take your time, relax. Let us all as servants under the yoke. Mama ya yen kwen yina ye si kun ya se. A bra yesu su wa jim ye fri kun ya biem. Na sorry nim ye ye kun ya. Nkun ya dayaso. No me dayaso. We are slaves. And Paul said we should be happy and clap our hands. So that be a jamien mu yamba de dinti. What are you telling me? Good news, what's it? Uh-huh. And you, you are reading this quotation, and it's in your Bible, and you think that the Bible is the word of God. Bible Jesus said, From today, I don't call you servant again, but I call you sons. I am no longer a slave and I cannot be slave and nobody should treat me as such. Who has the tree Bible? What? And you think it's Paul who wrote it. Paul preached it. So it's good. So it's a good message. Now I dare to now so kind. In Quadudo, our work in Conway as Yenumo. In Quadudo, I'm working on the Asina. In Muwa Ranum, say, Muwa Muranum, say, and Indian in Nasa one. Say, and Indian in your Mudia. Nanyanko Pondini in church, said the Abbey and Yanko Pondini in church, and when you may wear in Conway for slave for Muas or Munya, somebody deemed who pays live. Uncle, Uncle, so some Mubra and a tree, Paul, none of my friend one for. My God. And they that are believing masters. Let them not despise them. Because they are brothers, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. This thing teach and exhort. When I'm on quarter, some message when a Paul, Chile, come at Timothy say, on church, I deal with one answer. Says we be a kwawa solo wa umuni master. We, we are Chile Baba Bruno. Namafa. 
because we are not slaves. You are a son of God. Today, you are changing from a nobody to become a somebody. You are shifting from a normal member into a prophetic son. That from today, your talking will be different. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. That's why I'm telling you, your prayer is not the same like a member, normal person praying. Faith is not believing God that all things are possible. No. That's a short level of faith. To a member, to a Christian, to the world, faith is believing God that all things are possible. But to a prophet, faith is believing God and behaving God. So, when a prophet come to a river and the river have closed up, what God will do is what he will do. You don't wait for God to come and talk. You talk to the river. Open up, I'm coming. And the river will open. I speak to you today as sons. In the name of Jesus, you are going home as a prophetic champion. Power is released unto you now. You shall no longer be intimidated by anything. Receive the spirit of boldness. Come on, somebody shout, I hear you, sir. If you're a prophet, you don't say that faith is believing God. No, it's behaving God. Faith is what? Faith is what? So if Jesus told the dead man, come up, what are you supposed to tell the dead man? Come up. You don't wait for God to come and do it. You do what God will do. God will do what he will do. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. From today, you are switching from a normal human being. Don't live a common life again. Don't eat common bread again. Don't, there are people you should cut them off from your life. You are no longer in the same realm. You are no, no, he's not your friend. We are not mates. We may be age mates, but we are not spiritual mates. Am I talking to somebody here? From today, what Jesus will do, you are about to do it. I want you to listen to me very carefully. Nobody has seen God before. Anytime we see God, no man was there. Anytime anybody has talked about the exploits of God, it was who? There was a man. So listen to me. Men are God. God is a man. <laughs> There are 17 of you. You are switching to a God life. You, are, you will be no longer considered as a normal man again. Those who used to insult you can never insult you again. Those who used to look down on you can never look down on you again. Those who used to say, who are you? They can't say that to you again. From today, shout, I am switching. Into the realms of the spirit. I'm a, I'm a spirit man. Shout it again. Who are you? Say it louder. Tell the devil who are you? Shout hallelujah. Spirit man. Amen. Don't behave common again. Listen, you can live for one year, you are not eating, and you won't feel it. So, some of our senior brothers work for 40 years. They did what? They worked for 40 years. The Bible says, and their shoes were not changed. That's very mysterious. Because when you are age one, your shoe is not the same as age 40. And if the Bible said they didn't change their shoe, then what happened? In other words, when they were growing, their shoes was also increasing. Never behave you are a common man. Never behave you are poor. Never behave you are a beggar. 
never let be intimidated by anybody again. When you sit in trotro, it is not you that is in a trotro. So don't look down on yourself. Somebody shout out here, sir. When you are poor, you are not poor. You have too much money. It's just that you, are, you, you have not bring it out. You are waiting for a time. Imagine Jesus as a carpenter's boy. Was he a carpenter? Was he a carpenter? Was he a carpenter? He was a savior of the world, waiting for time. You are a savior of your generation, waiting for time. You are a savior of Ghana, waiting for time. You are a savior of destiny, waiting for time. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Nobody should be allowed to intimidate you again. Even if you don't have money and you are walking on the, on the floor. No, you shouldn't think I'm walking. Look at me, I'm poor. You are not poor. N never say you don't have anybody again. Never say you don't have any helper again. Because you have a whole God backing you up. Abba. Hello. If the president call you, you feel proud that president has called you. And this one is God that I've called you. No, no, you are not hearing what I'm talking about. And you are crying, and you are intimidated, and you are crying. I don't have anybody. Die, I mean, God, I mean, my brother. My brother, my brother. My Jimmy. How is this all? Do you know who he has called you? Do you know who you are? You are not poor. You are not sickler. Our language is different. In this realm, let the weak say, I am Let the poor say, I am We are not the same. Are we the same? No. Are, are you the same like other people? No. Where we are now, when we are weak, we call it what? When we are poor, we call it what? Rich. So you see, different world. In the world, when you save money, you become rich. In our world, when we throw, when we give out, we receive it. So I just want you to understand this. We are not in the same realm. We are not in the same world. Once you become a prophet, you are different entity, you are a different man, you are a different woman. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. In other words, there are certain things that you need to key yourself into, and one of them is a covenant. Some say covenant. You cannot be working with God without a covenant. Because the system of the world wants you to remain normal, wants you to remain a commoner, but one of the things that will make you, you know, stuck into the realms of the spirit is the covenant. Is what? So if you don't understand prophetic covenant, you will maybe be able to walk in the power. Somebody shout out here. It takes only covenant to keep you here. Because the world, some of you have been 40 years of your age. You have been taught one-sided brain. You have been taught to think like a nobody. You have been taught to think that you can't do miracles. You have been taught to think that you can't prophesy. You, can be, you have been taught to think that you are a poor person. You have been taught to think that you are not rich. You know, you are sick. You are a sickler. You are this. No. So, you see, and God is switching you up into this realm of authority. It will take only covenant to keep you here. You cannot be a prophet without understanding covenant and without the practice of covenant. Write it down. You cannot be a major in this realm without understanding prophetic covenant. You cannot walk in the supernatural without understanding prophetic covenant. So we need me near Pama. Now I want to one tier di fujuma na pamasia. E di fujuma na yapamo. One of the greatest secret of the prophetic. Musu be a shem kom. Nen ni pe fe shero. O shemurem. Nen ni pe buso. Nya mi shiranoa. Ova. A di anib secret bakon. Eye prophetic covenant. 
Aya pam. Oni nyame wa pam bi. There are certain covenant to be oni nyame wo. And no man can bring him down. Won te da. Won te sempa ni phone de bia, father sini bi kan de bia. Say akwa we oni nyame wa pam o. So fu we oni nyame wa pam o. Bia wo ka fa ne ho bi anya djuma. Whatever you say to them will never work. Whatever the enemy try, I'm not communicating here. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Hello. Hello. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 12. But now, have he obtained a more excellent ministry? By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. This is New Testament. This is the New Testament. In Hebrew chapter 8 verse 6, we read together. Let's go again. But now, had he obtained a more excellent ministry. Do you want to walk in a more excellent ministry? <laughs> Do you want your ministry to transcend generations? 40 years you will still be around 50 years you will still be relevant then you need to discover what covenant that you must walk in but now had he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also everybody say how much how much also he, he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So listen, we are now operating on a second covenant. But you see, Paul didn't teach us. It takes a prophetic destiny scientist like me to discover something. Or say, send the first covenant now so for no one. On some bed is so for me, who rough rough. On send any man quay a mom. Because the first covenant in a normal year, Jumano, there was fault. So Jesus came to seek the second covenant. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. If the first one, it's not enough to be called. It's not enough to be prophet. It's not enough to be prophesying. You may be prophesying and prophesying and evangelizing. But if you lack the better covenant, if you lack the second understanding, the practice of the covenant, forever. The same gospel you are preaching. You are preaching salvation. Nobody will come. You are preaching prosperity. Nobody will come. They come, they scatter. They come, they go. And your resident pastor, and so maybe I'm It's because many men of God don't know the mystery of the covenant. The prophetic operate on covenant platforms. Until God covenanted with you, you cannot be assigned to a prophetic angel. Number one. There's what we call prophetic angel. A dear phobia or angel on any juma. Before some angel nobody may operate, before your angel will begin to assign and accept you, you have to have a covenant with God first. Because you cannot be trusted. It is only on covenant you can be trusted. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Yes. Hey, somebody follow what I'm saying here. Yes, so prophetic angel who will watch over the manifestations of the order of the spirit. When you command something, as you are going home, receive money right now. That angel who makes sure that the people receive the money is called a prophetic angel. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm talking about. He gives order. Hello, it's called the Malakim or the Malak, the Marak, or the Ishim, or the Elohim. These three angels are in charge of prophets. The Marak, 
there is him there is him is him or is him it's pronounced in the Greek word is him by his I S H I M is him that angel is called a prophetic angel that revelation chapter 12 give us right to the angel of the church right to the angel be our angel so for be our angel but when you when you bet me because you don't have a covenant when you mean you the more we the more the more the more the more the more the more the the more the more the more the the more the more the more the more the more the more the you cannot be entrusted with prophetic presence. So there are people, there are men of God who lack presence. When they are talking, you look at them and you are seeing fresh. You are seeing normal. Like, what are they preaching? Even when they are prophesying and you are watching them, you look at them and say, What is this? Do you know friends what you did for? I don't know men of God or same compare about who knows we are grown woody. Have you two noticed like that? Some people are performing miracles, but you'll be laughing. You'll be laughing. Why? Because they lack presence. You can be gifted as a prophet. You are prophesying with names, details, but you lack presence. And it's because the person do not have a covenant with God. Nanka will presence him, will angel, will presence him. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Number three. So, number one, without a covenant, you don't have a prophetic angel. Number two, without a covenant, you don't have a prophetic presence. <laughs> number three, without a covenant, you don't have a prophetic office. There is something called prophetic office. That is where God has entrusted the custodian of the word into your mouth. To the extent you can stand in your office and decree without even God spoken. And yet prophet, we can create, we can coin, we can even formulate. But <laughs> Elisha look into the skies and said, from today, I stand in my office as a prophet. I close, I close the skies and I command that from today, it should not rain. And the Bible said, for three and a half years, it didn't rain. The department of rainfall was shut down because a prophet from his office has spoken. Why? We are just walking normal. Obi okwa wa chene basic apam so onko ye normal apam no e bi ni 40 days fast and no money ade ade we mu ye normal 50 days 70 days fast we did agro now we ni ma apam e bi mu ye we ni covenant as of bi mu keep at their levels do you know the certain covenants and sacrifices that some people are keeping to maintain the flock a gro na wudi na mi mfa ni pamedi wachi abra we ni ni apam talk to me man and I'm a men cannot be time like that the only thing that is keeping men to stay in the marriage is the covenant of the wedding ring. The wedding. A dear now, why you two person with Jaya? Who work with him? A car, who be born? Nti, tina musa. A friend, or sorrow, and chitro. May angel, may you be wedded with God. Am I talking to somebody here? 
Because you it can take you about three years. Now when you do wedding, can you just wake up and say, "I don't love you again"? I, I've divorced you, <laughs> my friend. Now you don't have a case with your wife again. You have a case with the government. So the case is between you and the state. <laughs> A covenant will keep you forever. That's why if you don't have a covenant, God cannot trust you with his presence. That's why if you don't have a covenant, God cannot trust you with an office. But if you have an office, you can use Some of you, by the grace of God, I am not saying my name. It's Jesus Christ. I'm not Jesus Christ. But by the grace of God, prophetically, sometimes you, you may even use, oh, I stand in the oil of my father and miracle happen. Because we, are have, we have a spiritual office. There's a department in heaven that is a custom in my name. It is an office of impartation. I'm the general in that area. Any man of God who is doing impartation, I give them some grace. Having to see that any time you want to understand faith, there is a man of God who has been given that office. You, everybody have their book. Who is that? Bishop Edith. You can never walk in faith in this world right now without the book of Bishop Edith. Why? Because the man is the officer. He's in charge of that office. If you want to operate in miracles right now, in the whole world, there are only two men of God. Pastor Chris and Benny him. Don't you have your books? <laughs> you want to walk in the prophetic data forensic. Prophet Hubert Angel. Is that also? There are men who have offices in the realms of the spirit. If you want to operate in their line, in their part, in their department, you must seek their attention. You must know how to have covenant with them before you be allowed in their office operation. Hear me, sir. Not all men are common. Some men have become God. <laughs> if you want to understand wisdom and influence and leadership, there's a man of God in Ghana, Dr. Mensah Otabel. Who to buy his book? Who to listen to his message? Why don't you listen to Paul? <laughs> Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. If you want to understand anointing of people falling down, there is a man of God who has been given the falling down anointing all the way from Borigatanga. If you want to operate in the office, that you say, hey, and they fall down, you have to go to him. You have to go to his. Are you falling down? That means these men have covenant with God. You want to listen to mysteries about the prophetic? You must listen to me. The whole world. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you like, leave me. Go. When you go, you, you, you go and meet certain prophet, they will tell you, listen, there is a man of God. If you want to operate in the prophetic, go and see him. If you want to operate in the prophetic power, that they will, those who are truthful, they will tell you. They will tell you. They will tell you. Listen. I met a guy, a young guy in Kumasi, when I was in Kumasi last week. As I was leaving, somebody was just rushing to me. Ran to my car. I said, what is it? What can I do? He said, sir, I went to a program. I'm a businessman. I went to a program. I was in the midst of the crowd. A man of God just came and picked me up and said, you, you have a prophetic calling and the only man who can help you is Bishop Sam who's going to look for him. So I heard that you are coming to Kumasi here. That's why I'm here. I'm here. I've come. I'm, please help me, sir. I said, wow, a man of, another man of God. So now they know my office. <laughs> Over. Last, about a month ago, I went to one of my, my, my mentors' birthday. A bishop, George uh, Fletcher Foliata. And when he was calling me, he told the whole pastors that were there. He said, listen, if you are struggling in ministry, listen. He said, let me tell you, if you are struggling in the prophetic ministry, there is one man of God who has the king. This is the king. Go and see him. 
guys here. He said, in the midst of all pastors, I know the office of a priest, but it didn't come just like that. If you want to have the prophetic, number one, prophetic word, angel. If you want to have prophetic word, presence. If you want to have prophetic office, you will need what? Covenant, prophetic covenant. Number three, or number four, if you want to have prophetic provisions, somebody say prophetic provisions. If you want to have prophetic provisions, do you know what prophetic provisions are? You don't know. Prophetic provisions are certain spiritual stored blessings that are in your spiritual account that you can lay hold on. Even when you are sleeping, you can still operate in them. You still don't understand my language. You are babies in the spirit. <laughs> Every prophet has a spiritual store that which God has talked in certain levels of blessings. For instance, if you see me, there are certain things I have. If you watch my television, you will see that pastors come to me and their ministry turn around. That's one of my, that's one of the goods I have in my store. <laughs> you will see that barren women are being heaven children. Having to notice, having to head, that no matter how barren you are, you come to my ministry, by the grace of God, you will give birth. Uh -huh. It means these are some of the goods I have in my spiritual store. If you are sick in any form of sickness, by the grace of God, I lay hands on you or I lay leg on you. Either I lay hands or lay leg. Have you to see how I lay my leg? I lay leg on you or I lay my hands on you. The sickness die. They are in my spiritual store. So there is something called spiritual provision. After today, God is going to stock your spiritual store with spiritual amenities, divine blessings, supernatural miracles. Shout at me like a fire. Have you noticed there is a man of God in this country that he has so much eyes and so much ears that if your eyes are blind, you go, he can pluck some for you. Who is that man of God? Kadosa. If you like, let somebody steal one of your ear and you can't hear for 20 years. Go to him. The man has in his store too much ears. <laughs> Somebody shout out, yeah, yeah, yeah. A friend, but the Niamh Bessie shall stone him. Ah, it was a way I did for the minimum San Yama win. You don't know prophetic presence, you don't know prophetic angels, you don't know prophetic provisions, you don't know prophetic office. And who, so, who, who make you prophet? I, I am telling the whole world, how can you be a prophet and you have not studied this courage? This lesser corn must be taught in the realms of the spirit. When I met Elijah and we met Moses and Elijah, when they came and we were talking, we were studying, they taught me this one. So if you're a prophet and you have not met Elijah before, where did you go to school? Because in the realms of the prophetic, Elijah is our lecturer. Elisha is our lecturer. Moses is our lecturer. And when we meet them, they teach us the mysteries of the presence of the prophetic. You don't even know what is in your store. You don't know the proper gift and graces you have. Some of you are going to see this person again. You are going to see this person again. I release the goose of the spirit. I release prophetic provisions, prophetic miracles, prophetic breakthroughs, prophetic power. Lift your legs, shall Yes! From today, hey, from this town, from your family, these are called prophetic provisions. Now, maybe a good story, a sacred enough of rubber. 
a sacrament for Fraba, a sacrament for Fraba. From today, somebody is catching that anointing. Somebody is having that grace. From to, you will not be lack of miracles. Ah, if your leg, one leg is short, there is a man of God in Ghana. If one of your leg is short, is short, the man has too many legs. Can I talk to somebody here? After today, you will have too much money, too much miracles, too much power, too much prophecies in your spiritual account. Shout amen seven times. Two, three, four, five, six. Last one, shout it. Shout, I have provisions. Say, oh God, my father, grant me spiritual provisions. I have oil to prosper. I have fruit of the womb. I have power of impartation. I have traveling grace. I have miracles. These things, I can make a drama become a history maker. I can make a nobody become a somebody. God, I have these things in my proper course. These are in abundance in my realms. Even if I sleep and you wake me up, I can still flow in this growth. Yeah. And you are a pastor for years. You don't know what grace you have. Right now, I release prophetic provisions into your spiritual account. The day of your impartation, May the glory, the power of my father Idahosa, the anointing of my father Isudanaba, the miraculous power of Bishop Charles, Archbishop Charles Ajinasare, the power of prayer from Archbishop Nicola Duncamuliam, the anointing for nations. I transfer them into your spiritual account. 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 I transfer them to your spiritual account. I transfer them to your spiritual account. You will not lack power. You will not lack provisions. Shout, I have provisions. Kasemi wo sun sun muni ema. Ebini awo. Ebini nkwaje. Ebini deliverance. Ebi ade nche wo deliverance wate. Special gift, special deliverance. Ma che wo bi wate. Di mo bi obi jine we ni mono. Ohu wanu wo tu afaso. From today, no demon can stand before you. Lift your hands and take that mantle. Seven people are taking it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Come on. Take it. 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 Ah. 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 Ah, para cada da bus. Ah. Receive prophetic provisions. Le pra konda na ma. Aye da bo si da ba. Ni a o man kwa. Asia. Asia no. Jesus, 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 she knows Jesus. Jesus. Mercy, 
Father, we thank you. Ah, a free I want to tell special gifts, special grace. Ah, Ghana, the whole Ghana, make us ah. Upa kwenye odia, koso fuio. Upa waria, koso fuio. Upa ni mnyama, koso fuio. I want to tell us how do we be? Amen. I da me ma wa kwanchere no. Da me ma chere wa pama ubeye no. Who will pay? Now we must go so. I want to make special provisions. Amen. Somebody says special provisions. Special provisions. So number one is what prophetic angels. Angel. Number two is what prophetic prophetic presence. presence. Number three is what prophetic office. Prophetic what office. Office. Number four is what prophetic provisions. Prophetic provisions. Somebody shout I hear you sir. I hear you sir. Somebody say prophetic provisions. Prophetic provisions. Let me add number five. Prophetic defense. When you have a covenant with God, when you enter prophetic covenant, there is a spiritual defense activated upon you. Nobody can touch you and go free. Nobody can insult you and go free. Some of you that when you go and do deliverance, the, the spirit and the diseases will now follow you. It's because you don't have defense. It's because you don't have covenant. That's why which crowd can follow you? <laughs> Obi say me kobo mpa ma ma me na o yare no me ba na me ba yare woni ma de ko woni covenant woni covenant na woni covenant so defense ni o so nothing is defending you nothing is taking a place of your security and if you don't have defense number 1 like i said diseases that you cast out will not enter into your life if you don't have a covenant if you don't have a covenant defense once you have a covenant it to create a defense Angels will be guiding you. And if you don't have it, diseases, problems, issues that you have dealt with will now locate you. They will now come to you. Number two, what happened is that people, you become just only a channel, but you don't benefit from the bliss, the blessings. So people will now enjoy your ministry, but you will not enjoy the ministry. In other words, you can prophesy for people to prosper, but you will not prosper. You can prophesy for people to have money, but you will not have money. You can prophesy for people to have healing, but your children will be sick. People lack covenant, and people have forgotten their covenant. They are not practicing it. That's what happened. They are not from it. He has just become a channel. So, a signpost. So, he can channel marriages but yet his marriage cannot stand he can channel healings but yet he cannot enjoy from the healing so you have seen a lot of pastors their children are sick and they can't lay hands on their children yet they are laying hands on the whole world and the world is healed by their own maybe they have lost their covenant or they are not practicing their covenant or they don't have a covenant or they are supposed to move to a higher covenant and they are still practicing the old covenant <laughs> Because as you progress, who call any man? Now I'm on so. Yeah, I was saying, son. Yeah, if you start with one hour prayer as a covenant, and you go to a certain level, there are certain levels you must enter seven hours now. I'm not talking somewhere here. And if you want to operate in the prophetic and you have never prayed seven hours, seven hours, twenty-one times in your life, you cannot enter the covenant. Seven hours, seven hours, sir. It should be seven hours, seven hours, sir, for twenty-one times before you can be given office. You are not mature enough. Seven hours. You have never prayed seven hours before. You are praying only one hour. One hour. One hour. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. Master, you are a baby. You, 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 you can't, you, you'll be operating with the baby's grace. Oh, me, me, mommy, I said, 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 
Hallelujah. Can I pro? Can I pro? Obey your asset, asset. Can I pro? 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 No, the Koto Korea film. Koto Korea, but two Koto Korea. Not our one person on Tinya. We have one son. No. Hello. Because all lack prophetic covenant. Inti niyama no no yehu di mama ngulo phone. Ono onto me and benefit it. You may be doing things for people you don't benefit. You don't, you lack prophetic covenant defense because when you operate in the prophetic covenant there is another level that of defense that is upon your life you go and sleep me i cast demons everywhere i travel to every nation i've been to many cities in the world i have cast demons i have i've done deliverance I preached in Tanzania before crusade big crusade in Tanzania i preached in Uganda big crusade in Uganda i preached in Kenya I preached in Zimbabwe, Malawi. I have had church in South Africa. I have preached in many places in Cote d'Ivoire. I have cast all kinds of demons. I have dealt with all kinds of principalities and powers. I have, traveled, I have had crusades in Nigeria, in Gumbe, in Bauchi, Yenegua. I have done. Look at some of the crusades. You see some of my crusades? You think you are dealing with your baby? Thousands. Eh, this is my Liberia crusade. 25,000 crowd. 25,000. And I go home and chop my rice and chicken. And sleep. After the crusade, you, if you preach in one of these crusades, one week, your body is weak. You are sick. You will see me do program here this week. Next week, I am in. Having to see. Yes, sir. Have you seen my brother Johnson Suleiman? Does that man rest? Every week, the man is traveling. You ask yourself, are they, are they not exhausted spiritually? No. They are spiritual. Look at Kusi. Look at, look at the crowd. You can check, check the one here. Check the, the one. Look at the crowd. Look at the crowd. Look at the people. There's a nations. Even in Ghana, I've done crusade in Ho. I've done crusade in Ho. That is Ho, Ho, Ho crusade. Ho. In the city of Ho. I've done crusade in Sokapek, Sokakope. I've done crusade in, uh, 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 Zima. in Zima. In Zima, in the city of Nyinahini. In the center of all the witchcraft. Yeah, in Zima. This is in Zima crusade. You think it's America? This is Enzema. In Zima crusade in Nipigosa. I have done crusade even in America. In the street of America. In the street of America, I have done crusade. When Americans are coming to Ghana to do crusade, me, I'm doing a crusade in America. I have done crusade in America. And Americans... Police, American police were guarding me. And some of them are giving their life to Christ. In America, in New Jersey, from New Jersey to Rhode Island, from Connecticut, one of our meetings in uh, Massachusetts, Houston. Michael, come and see white people crying. Me, I say, you boo. As you punish an army, come, come here, punish you. <laughs> yeah. One of my crusades in Florida. Only bishops. I prophesied to white people. They went home and brought one white lady. I prophesied to her. She, I said, your father is sick near death. He said, I said, go and bring your father now. She went home to bring the father. I taught them, slammed them with anointing oil. In America, you go touch people here, go back here. Who be you? I carry power now. You know, when I finish, I go and sleep. And if my wife is there, I chop her. Yes. I fucked up, I fucked up. Some of you, you preach one Sunday morning. Your body is shaking. You are so sick. 
if you lack prophetic covenant, eh, you lack prophetic defense. And if you lack prophetic defense, people promise you they will never fulfill. You are a pastor, but promise and faith follow you like mother and child. People will promise you, everybody will promise you. Man of God, we don't want to permanent me. I don't know what you're was asking. Master, the miracle will come, but the land will never appear. Some of them they will even see you and pass as if they don't know you. They will look at you like this passing. We are passing. And you say, Ah, what the rose now with me? Oh, me who now suffer. Now come to chapter, which is why I busy until you. You will see your members passing. Because it takes defense, the defense power for people to promise and fulfill. When somebody says, Man of God, I will give you land, the angel of defense will go and defend that thing they have said. Yeah. He will go and impound on that person. Give that thing. Give that thing. You cannot frustrate the prophet. Drop that money. Give that seed. Give that. If you lack defense, nobody will pledge. They will pledge and they will never support you. You lack defense. So you struggle. You pump money into ministry. Nothing comes out. You take your wife's car, sold it into the ministry. Nobody will give you. Praise the Lord. Because you are lacking defense. And if you lack defense, the angel of defense will never command anybody to give you. Do you think we survive in ministry by offerings? There is an angel that commands people to give to us without thinking. Oh, no, just come, Papa. Please, the Lord sent me to you. The Lord says I should give you ten thousand. I don't have anything. This is the only money I have in my account. I just went to draw everything. Papa, the Lord said, I said, Wow, wow. And then one, one of them, they just finished school. One of the class that just, they just finished. Ah, there's one of my son here. Why is him? You, what's his name, Paul? Evans. Evans will bring me dollars. Is it dollars or something? Dollars, pounds. In their class when he was in the Bible school. Have you seen he's still around me? He will leave the class. After they have finished the service, everybody's going. You can't say, Papa, I've come. The Lord says, I will bring you $200, $500, $5,000. Say, Papa, please. The Lord says, I will raise $10,000 for you. So I'm raising it. When I finish, I'll bring it to you. I said, Okay, I'm waiting. Wow. So, <laughs> it's wisdom. Look at what happened. The Bible says, Jesus prayed for 10 leprous men. Is that not so? As they were going, all of them were happy. They said, ah, oh, thank you, Lord. They all left. One of them left the crowd, came back to Jesus and said, thank you. Jesus said, wow. Is it one or two? Wow. One. Jesus said, wow, this guy is so smart. From today, be... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You must always know how to follow very well. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. Are you still here? You are learning something. Yes, sir. Defense. Everybody say defense. Defense. The same spirit of defense is what protects the members not to leave. When somebody registers to be a member of your church, there is an angel that established them. He plant them at the altar. If you don't have a covenant, nobody will follow you and follow you forever. They will just come and go. They will just come and go. Something will tell them, get out. Something will tell them, get out. Because it's not easy for people to change their mind and follow. Everybody is under something. There's no free man anywhere. Some of you that you are here, are you not under something? Don't you have spiritual fathers already? Don't you have pastors already? We have. But you have left them to come to me. <laughs> what is making you to come from Kumasi all the time to this place? Something. Mm. What's your name? I was shocked. He said, I come from Kumasi. I live in Kumasi. My church is in Kumasi. And I said, why are you here? He said, I've been watching you for years. And God have told me that I've delayed my time. I should come to you. I should have come. Who's it? When, so how many years now? 15 years. 15 years. 15 years you have been following me. And you have been struggling. So now God said, get up, go and see my servant. He left all the way from Kumasi. He's attending here. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophetic defense will protect your souls. It will protect the members. Even if it's 20, nobody will scatter them. God there's an angel of protection. Now, let me give you some basic five realms, dimensions of prophetic covenant. 
I can't give you the third dimension. When you grow and come and see me, then I'll give you. But I can give you the first dimension. Hallelujah. Types of prophetic covenant. Okay, let me give you types of prophetic covenant. The, 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 the part one. They are in three phases. So let me give you the phase one. The phase one, the covenant prayer and fasting. It's phase one. Covenant prayer and fasting. Everybody who has finished school from me knows about this secret. Everyone who has been imparted by my ministry has this secret. You can never finish school here without that. The day you come before me for prophetic covenant direction, I will tell you about this. Listen to me. You cannot be praying normal as a normal pastor. As a normal member. As a prophet, your prayer should be turned into a covenant. That is the only way you can have the supply of presence, angel, office, provisions, and defense. You pray anyhow. You pray anytime. You know a prophetic prayer and fasting is a specific observant covenant time and hour that you know that if you don't pray, you are going to lose something. That's what covenant prayer and fasting is. Every prophet must have a day called a covenant day. That is another word called Sabbath. In the old theology, it's called Sabbath. God told the people, I have given you seven days. You six days, but there is one day you must observe to, for me alone. If you're a prophet, that law is not over. <laughs> you think that law is over? Wow. Sabbath is still working for prophets. If you're a prophet and you don't have a Sabbath day, you don't have a covenant day that you rest your body, only spirit, only you and God is talking. And you are every day preaching, every day having sex, every day eating. You are a dead man walking. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, sir. You must have a covenant day. A day that's your spiritual day. That day you are not eating. That day you are not joking. You are not praying around. You are not even having sex and making love. The flesh is disassociated from you. That is a day you observe spirituality. You have not had that day and you call yourself a prophet. That, no wonder nothing is holding your hands. No wonder you can't keep a member. No wonder you can't keep promises and visions cannot be provided with solutions and power and fertilization. Your words are not manifesting and they are not producing. It's because you are not having a supply system. You should have a day that you supply to your demands of the spirit. You should have a day that you have given to God that only God have you that day. <laughs> and the more you grow, the more covenant days you must have. I started with one. Now I have three covenant days. Every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, I don't eat. I don't make love. It's a day for God. So if you are my wife, you want to feel that day. Feel Monday. Somebody shout that here. Yes, sir. My friend, these days are God's days in my life. I'm carrying the souls of prophets in my ministry. Every prophet represents about 1,000 souls. So if I have 12,000 prophets that I'm supplying grace, do you know how many souls are contacted to my spiritual realm? 12,000 times 1,000. That's about 120,000 souls. I have over 120,000 members in my spiritual account. That's why whatever you can buy, by the grace of God, I can buy it. Amen. You may not know how it works. <laughs> I can't joke with it. I can't know. You, can't, you, don't, you have 50 members and you don't have a day for them. You pray anyhow. Members pray anyhow. You too, you pray anyhow. You fast anyhow. Any day you want to fast, you fast. Your children do not even know the day you are fasting. They don't know every Friday night you sleep in church. Me, every Friday night I'm in the church office. 
every Friday night. It's my covenant night. Those of you who have been around every Friday night, you normally see me. I'll be standing upstairs here. After finish a major meeting, Friday major meeting, I don't go home till the next day. Why? I have people that they are looking for my grace. I must receive demand. There's a supply of angels. I've been giving out the whole week. There must be a day I take from heaven. It should be covenanted. It should be what? Covenanted. It's a covenant. If you don't do it, your body is shaking. Some of the pastors are even doing it, but they don't know what is the meaning. And they don't know the name. So when you tell them, oh, leave that thing, it's not true. There's nothing like that. Meanwhile, Sundays they don't eat in the morning. For the past 20 years, they have never eaten before. And they don't know why God told them not to eat. Some of them, because they are not spiritual scientists, they have not, they have not learned like I have studied in the realms of the spirit. Praise the Lord. They don't know. There should be a covenant day. There should be what? Covenant day. You can choose the day you are born. Yeah. To fast and to be prayer. To read and study. And the only thing you do is the work of God. No other business. No football. No physical. Everything is God. Everything is God. It's called covenant day. You must have a covenant year fasting. And prayer. You must have your covenant year fasting and prayer. Covenant year. Every year, you must have at least 40 days to engage with divinity. It's a yearly covenant. You must keep it forever. Look at RCGC. They are not casting demons there, they are not prophesying, mentioning names. But every year, it has never passed that Dr. Mensah Otebe has ever forgotten 40 days every year. Go to Action Chapel. Every year, they do 70 days. Go to Pastor Isu. Every year, he does 70 days. Go to Reverend Sam Kranchaka. Every year, he does 21 days at the altar. What do you do? What is your covenant year fasting and prayer? Some of you have just shown you. Is that not? So I know you will keep it. But some of you that have just come, I have not shown you. I don't know what your mama will, the day mama will let you come and see me. Then I will show you. Because you must have a code in the spirit. What is your number? Everybody is not the same. Somebody is required 21 days. Somebody is required 40 days. Somebody is required 70 days. So your father should be able to know and tell you your own is 70 your own is 20. Your own is 50. You don't compare yourself with anybody. Somebody shout out here, you sir. Yes, sir. And you must keep it every year. Why the fathers, as old as they are, every year they are doing it, and you, a young man, you forget it. You forget your covenant day. You forget your yearly covenant fasting and prayer. And you want to grow. No wonder... You go up and come down. You go up and come down. I don't mean that everybody should start a church. You can be in a ministry for 20 years. You have not started a church. And yes, you are blessed. Joseph was not a general overseer. But he was the blessed and even a general overseer. <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. Yes, sir. Once you understand your covenant, people will bless you up. Bishop James, sir, is he not an associate pastor? Is he not blessed than some of you? You are generous. Bishop Eldiadi. Bishop David Abio, yeah? Are they not blessed than some general overseers in this country? Yes, sir. You don't need to be a general overseer to be blessed. Just do ministry. Ministry is ministering. But if you have the covenant, it's working for you. So you can be in the church as a normal member in the church, but you have a ministry in the ministry. When you leave Sunday and you go out, you have a fellowship. Hundreds of thousands of people are blessing from your ministry. And they also bless you. 
Everybody wants to start a church. Genuine overseer. Genuine overseer. No, no covenant. You don't have any yearly covenant. And you want to, you want to be a genuine overseer. You don't have a covenant day. You want to be a prophet. <laughs> you have never prayed for seven hours for 21 days before. So under covenant prayer and fasting, it requires a covenant day. Number two, it requires a yearly minimum of 40 days fasting every year. It also requires seven day prayer for 21 days continuous. Seven hours. It requires seven hours prayer for 21 days. Then the covenant will be established. Then the covenant is established and all the five virtues begin to work. The prophetic office, the prophetic presence, the prophetic defense, the prophetic angel, the prophetic provisions began to be activated. Will you obey God today? You will walk in that dimension. Amen. You will walk in that dimension. Amen. Your aiming is suffering from something. Amen. Receive that provisions. I receive it. Receive that revelations. I receive it. Shout at me like a thunder. Amen. My son, listen. Don't forget these things I am telling you. I may not teach it again until you finish the school. So keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind. Write it down. The day you come before the prophet, I will now tell you, you your own is this. Your code is this. Your code is this. Go and do it. And when you follow, you now see what will happen. People will be willing. Oh, The ministry becomes blissful. How can you be in ministry? You are struggling in business. You come to ministry and you are still struggling. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Something is wrong. You can't be struggling in business and struggling in ministry at the same time. Ah. God is helping you. That your amen is not coming. Amen. Number two. Prophetic covenant of soul winning. Prophetic covenant of soul winning. You must enter to a covenant to win so, so much for God that souls are too important to you than anything. Listen, if you're a prophet and you consider money before people, God will withdraw his presence and power. You must be aggressive looking for souls. You must make a covenant with God that you will pump money to win souls. You can do anything to win a soul. The reason why God has given Jesus a place to sit in the kingdom is because the man can give God anything just to have a soul in the kingdom. To the extent he sacrificed his body, he gave himself as a ransom so that we will come to Christ. Wow. Because of this, come and sit down here. What can you give to souls? What can you sacrifice for souls? What have you done for souls? What have you paid? What have you lost for souls? Some of you are having television in your house. And yet in your church, you don't have a common flyer to invite somebody to come to church. Some of you are sleeping in king size bed. And yet your church do not have drums and keyboard. You have a car and you have never given it to Christ. And you want God to bless you with prophetic power. <laughs> Go and ask any great man of God that is walking the supernatural power. They sacrifice for souls first before God granted them audience. Souls are the most important thing to God. Every other thing are benefit, are, are, are bona fide blessings. So until you have a covenant, until you make a covenant with God, he said, I'm not seeking everything. Seek ye first this Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things. What are you looking for? A pastor, you are looking for money. A pastor, you are looking for rich people who have come to church. You are filled already. God will never make you rich. That is the wrong perception. Sometimes we even go and pray for rich people to come to church. 
It means certain people will yes to him. He will die. He will change his life. He will change his life. Hey, never pray that prayer again. Finipa. Pray for souls. Souls is everything to God. Listen, in the kingdom prosperity, it's not how many rich people you have. It's how many crowd you have. That's why you have never seen any man that have crowd that is poor. Any man of God that have crowd, no matter how poor his members are, that man of God will never be poor. Go and check it. Go and check it. Crowd is the secret. People is the secret of God's blessings. So until your pursuit for people aggressive, until you are so mad about people coming to church, until you are so mad about the check being packed, your blessing is inevitable. You are praying for money. Stop it. A pastor don't pray for money. A man of God, you pray for sponsors? No. You have lost it. Just do your work. The rest shall be provided. Be aggressive. Go to Facebook. Aggressive. Every day, every morning. Be on television. Do you know why pastors are buying television and they are broadcasting? Have you ever seen any pastor that is using TV to be so poor before? Even if the people are not coming to your church and you are blessing crowd, God has a way of paying you because of how blessing crowd. God has a way of paying you because of how many people you are reaching. Until you reach out, you will never become rich. Riches in the kingdom is in your reaching out. If you don't know how to reach out, you can never be rich in the kingdom. You are sitting here with only 10 people you are praying for. God will never make you a millionaire. Have you ever seen a pastor that have only 20 people that's a millionaire before? Tell me any pastor that have only 20 rich people in his church that's a millionaire. Never. God will never let it happen. Why? God is interested of souls, not money. Make a covenant with God. Every church you find yourself, win souls, be aggressive, pull people, go and bring people, be, aggr- be like a mad person. Go, Papa, I brought 10 people to soul. Church. I brought five people. Listen, when I see some of my spiritual sons who are poor, you know who have cursed them? God have cursed them. God is the one who has cursed them because of lack of souls. You don't know the depth of the mysteries of souls. God can give you anything just because of a soul. One day, Jesus and Satan had a negotiation. Satan was trying to tell Jesus, don't go and win the souls. Just give me yourself and I'll give you Jerusalem. He said, you don't know what you are looking for. The souls I'm going to win, I'm going to have the whole world. And you are trying to give me Jerusalem. Jerusalem is too small for me. Some of you, you are wasting your time doing all night in one member's house where you can read to thousands of people. You can be in the streets. You can be preaching. How can you sit in a throttle from your house to this place? You never share the word of God. You never pray for the person. You never even spoke that you were a man of God. You were quiet in the car. You want them to know you are a prophet. It's prophet written on your forehead. Check your level of poverty and check your level of souls. Every preacher that is poor is connected to your level of souls. The level of souls and your spiritual account determine your network or network in life. Why Winners Chapel is the richest church in the world? Winners Chapel is in every street. Winner Chapel is in every town. Winner Chapel is everywhere. Why Pastor Chris is the richest pastor? One of the richest pastors in the world. Rhapsody of reality. Everybody, almost everybody have a copy of Rhapsody of reality in your house. Yes, yes. For free. The more they are sharing it, they think they are mad. They think they are not smart. It's a covenant secret. For you to be trusted, 
you must prove to God that you are so addicted. Some of you are not so addicted. You don't have souls as interest. All you want to do is you want to prophesy. Listen, the greatest gift in the prophetic is the evangelism gift. Evangelistic ministry is higher than a prophet. So if you're a prophet and you don't have evangelism ministry, you are not going anywhere. You'll be poor as a pauper. Because every prophet must be looking for souls. Because the more new people come, the more your prophetic becomes sharp. If a prophet stays with members, if a prophet stays with the same members for years, his prophetic anointing will die. It will go back. It will go back to God. Because it's not relevant. It's not in use again. So prophets are always looking for new people. Because the more you see new people, the more the prophetic is activated. It should. Are you an agent or so? What is your evidence? Have you win, have you win 1,000 people for God and he has not blessed you? You are here complaining and saying you don't have helpers. But you have no work. You have no evidence. You sit in a taxi. You never preach. You sit in the house. If some of you, the house you are staying, nobody knows you are a prophet. The house you are staying. The area you stay, nobody knows you have a call of God upon your life. Nobody knows you are a minister. You want to be given puppet before you can preach, eh? Ah. Say, Papa, Papa doesn't know what I carry you. The day Papa will give me my cane. Eh? That will be the day he will see, say, me too. He has imparted something inside of me. <laughs> Look at you. You have lost it. Listen to me. Woe unto me if I stay in my corner and I never share the gospel. The more I spread the gospel, the more I reach out, the more richer I become. Listen. What is your spiritual account? If I check your account, how many people have you touched their life with the name of Jesus? What you are saying, I mean, my say, Master. You have, the world has employed you, sir. Has God employed you? Have you worked for God? Have you worked for God? You can't spend one day in your life to go out every day. Just go here. Madam, me pass some number one pie. Dear help here for us. Catch an amount pie. Just go, just do a prayer outreach and see. Even if you are not going to say going to preach about heaven, just go and do prayer outreach. Just go out. Say, I just want to pray for you. Do you have any need? Do you have any prayer? Do you have any problem? I've come. I am doing house to house prayer. Prayer outreach. And you connect, it to, connect them to God. And those who are not born again, you lead them to Christ after. Because if they not, it may not accept your salvation message, they may accept your prayer message. That's why Jesus, whenever you want to bring salvation, he will bring miracles first. He will not pray for those who are sick to be healed. Jesus never did a crusade without pre praying for people who are sick first. He will first do miracle. When the people come, then you preach salvation to them. Yes, sir. Am I talking to somebody here? Just go. I just call. You have over 300 people on your phone. You have over 300 people on your phone. Can't you buy 20 Ghana City credit and start calling them and pray for them? She said, come go. Just go out. After this service, we are going out. Are you going? We are going out. Let your covenant begin today. Yes, sir. Check any man of God that God has blessed. The only reason why God has blessed them is because they have people. Is that not so? Yes, sir. Go and check. There's no man of God that's a wealthy millionaire. I will need Crawford. He has rich people. No, God is not interested about rich people. God is interested about souls. Go and win souls. The more you win souls, the more you bless souls, the more it comes into your account. Now account on a year. Now spiritual account on a year. Now spiritual account on a year. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Paul said, I am not looking for money, but I'm looking for something that may be abound into your account. <laughs> Philippians chapter 4, verse 17. Why we say we are prophets? We shall have boys who pampe. Now now, to me, fuka free kaswa be sin kotema. Oko bompa me ni baba akon. Abre ni baba hundred e good kaswa. Don't you know? Say the more people you bless, the more your spiritual account is accredited. There's a spiritual accreditation that's being granted to how many souls you have touched their life within a week. 
there is a secret in the pursuit of souls. Go and sell your car and use it to pump into souls. I see if God will not give you cars. Go and sell you your TV and pump it into souls. Don't be sitting there waiting for members to come. Reach out to them. Look for them. Pull them out from the street and plant them in the kingdom. The more your Rachel system is stronger, the more wider, powerful you become. Enter to a covenant. You may not be able to have the money to do it bigger, but your phone, your Facebook, your, your TikTok is there. Why don't you sit on TikTok and start prophesying? Even if you don't know how to prophesy, there is a key into prophetic. Can I show you the key to prophetic? Yes, yes. Can I show you one king to the all the prophetic? Yes, sir. That every prophetic realm have one king. Every prophetic realm have one king. John 10, 10. John 10, 10. Prophetic ninja. Me secret in me. All the prophetic code is in John 10, 10. The t- the thief cometh not. But can I show the prophetic code? Yes, sir. Prophetic code is John 10 10. Let's read. One to go. The thief cometh not. not. But for, for to, to, steal. to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Now, look at the prophetic king. Almost everybody in this world, Satan has stolen something from them. Or Satan want to kill them. Or what Satan want to destroy them. Oh, you are not hearing what I'm talking about. Put answer question. Soon soon we are saying ready be many say when you be next to cow on some we are not saying the same can just say one some we are never one sister but I had to say Someone say pro. pro. Hey. Are you following me, somebody? Yes. I release the prophetic key. Amen. I release the prophetic key. Amen. I release the prophetic key. Amen. Shout, I will prophesy. I will prophesy. Hey. Ah. Hey. Am I talking to somebody? Here? Yes, sir. And look at the prophetic answer. And I'm come that they may have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And it's so me, we answer about five we are near baby from sister. I read some can you say, Yeah, we are near baby. At the same time, I was sit down and part of the music I ever saw. I read some can you say, We'll be near at the end of the part. Hey, hey, so every prophecy is in this John 10 10. Why do we ask about some person? Obekuno. Obi a bit shady. Be about some person. Why then? Obekuno. About some person. We are not here. Meboa. So number one to steal. Number two to kill. Number three to destroy. Why now we see a na? We catch us. I mean, we say about some person. We say we near ma. Ah, that case we may about some to me say me near ma. We just want to mention come many we we need a boy now. The boy we need to say ya. Yes, sir. I open your eyes Amen. in the name of Jesus. Shout prophetic impartation. Prophetic impartation. The power is real. The power is real. Shout prophetic. Yes. Power. Be my name, mommy. Who? Everybody. Be my name, mommy. Who? Be my name, mommy. Who? 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 Money, Hey, 
Uchumi ya kase Sabu ume wanoa Asante nisisho Weno mni natura se Mkwa 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 ni onyame Herade Uchumi cho Enti meko soma sumuda Somebody shout yeah Yes Obi obi shie di bia Jesus Niamani ya di arayi Miansa Bonsam paso ya dayi Obi ya no Anaso wa ibi ya dada Eda so paso obi ya anaso wa ya dayi Obi ya no Anaso paso wa ya dayi Okuno Anaso wa ya dayi Waseno Anaso third one wa ya dayi Paso seno Okuno kura Satan has a plan to kill you. Satan has a plan to steal from you. Who's going to be answered? What do you mean? These are the kings of the prophet. John 10. All the prophetic is here. What Satan is doing or will do or has done and what God is doing or will do or has done. John 10. John 10. Be a kingdom so winner. Be a kingdom what? Son, be aggressive for souls. What person you meet? So two minutes can see na. She she nipa. The more crowd come, the more your prophecy will open. When people come, your miracles will open. When people come, you can see visions. Imagine you go to church and you are seeing only chairs. Would your will your eye open? Pump money, pump time. The kingdom investment will never be wasted. Share. And then you sorry, you fear a condition. We be check me a condition five. Oh, me fear. I was living in a by eight bedroom house, and air conditions. We remove it to the church. We took our stuffing chairs to the church. We took our curtains to the church. There was a time we didn't have curtains in our house. I sold my Mercedes-Benz car to start the TV station. I sold it to start. Today, look at all of you. Do you think if I want to buy Mercedes, I cannot buy? Look at all of you. Came out of because of the ministry. Master, those of you who have been who have been close to men of God who are big, go and see how much budget they have for evangelism. They pay so much money, and you look at it and say, crusade, church of Pentecost. The money they used to do crusade in lighthouse. It can change Ghana's life. They are doing it to renew their covenant. They are doing it to do what? Renew their, to renew their spiritual covenant. Cotton machines necessary to preach what? Cotton machines. Sasi ano pebi ya kujine kuro. Bowed. Uko futi o muntu. Ude tuabani gu. Dua dua bana sa. Dua babo se uko futi dua na da kubeda hi. Befifi ya swaba. Kujina market. Kujina market ne preachi. Ne jau hon jen trena de titi ofes wono. Kwa e preach. When you sit a car, everybody that enter the car, you should preach to them. Wotin a kwa tolimu anasase yashem kwa madam, ati say, Ewadi se me kancho se nema biye yama wati. Yesu kriso suwa jwen wono. Wasu wo nema anase yinara ebe fan. Me wun se abe fwe wiwi anema biye fwonsa. Nan ka nema biwa wasu wo nyan wa wari mnesu wo nyan. Ewadi se me kancho se wonsa abe kamate. Kwa 
Nato. Masa bubu udan kofo shop. Bubu udan fitin shop. Sa siya siya nkom. Lay hands. Cast the demons. Siya nkom kikabi. Ni honto no ni honto no. Enyo na waye sevi ano. A jenkwa no. Enyo wa uru ano leye. Dia wa yansa udye. Dia ni muman. Dia kano onne beye. Ongu e ni ma seda. He. Ma menka sam chong. He. Sam chong chong. Ye tumi ye mistake siya nkom biya. Nyamen kaye. Ba san sa pamu ninti. Nyamen tumi mani bebo. Can we move to the next level? Covenant seed sacrifice. Covenant seed sacrifice. Everybody say covenant seed sacrifice. Covenant seed sacrifice. Hey, covenant seed. Huh. These are one of the greatest sacrifice that every prophet needs to engage in. Every man of God must raise seed. Don't let anybody deceive you. Some of them, they are telling you lies, but what they have done behind doors, you have no idea. The kind of men of God they have gone to see. Covenant seed is a sacrificial offering that God will ask you or a prophet will ask you or the, an angel will drop it in your heart to release Is either God will tell you in a dream or vision? Say me ba fasa for the we come and me do for we na me shiau. Take this sacrifice. Meet me at Mount Horo. Take this sacrifice. Go to this man of God. Go to this place. Go to this church and go and drop it. Sometimes God will speak to you. Sometimes God will not speak to you. You go to a church and a man of God will just pick you up. Come. The Lord said, Papa, Papa, I don't want to be P. Say, 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 but the Radisson and Cantor said, Release a seed of 100,000 Ghana cities, or 1 billion, or 500,000, or 50,000, or 10,000, or 5,000. Listen, never run away from it. Obey. That's the beginning of your acceptance in the realms of the Spirit. That's the beginning of maturity and covenant. Sometimes you will go before your spiritual father and you will look at him and say, My son, all the problem you have, go and look for bread, go and look for venison, such as I like, and give it to me, and your life will turn around. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Listen, don't joke with these things. I have been in the prophetic raising of men for 20 years, two decades, 21 years this year, 21 years of raising prophet. I know what they don't know. And I know what they know. I know all that they know. But I know something they don't know. I know all they know. For 21 years in this realm. That they are learning from me. They want to tell me they know me better. They know it better. I have seen poor people. Poor pastors. Nobody follow. After they obey this three covenant of prayer and fasting. They obey this covenant of soul winning. They obey this covenant of sacrifice. Things turn around. They will be standing in the park and people will be attracted to them. Men will be looking for them. And you ask yourself, what happened? Some of your church is in a city. Nobody is coming. We are hiding in forest here. Even Google map is not locating us. You are still coming. What is pushing men here? Covenant sacrifice. Se nyami muse obi da kubu se nyame. Bon pa yebu se papa se urade. Then na me nyapa papa ben na me fa. Adum ben provisions ben na pastor de mame. And what are the sacrifices I must lay? Do you know the sacrifices God have asked me to do? And I've done it, and God turned my stories around. If not the sacrifices. And the covenant, I wouldn't be here. I would have been disgraced by now. I've been, I would have been shut down because my ministry is one of the most dangerous ministry in the world. Satan is looking for me more than your pastor. How many pastors are carrying twelve thousand prophets in their hands and they are still walking free? And I drive around. 
and I don't have any issue. Come on. Pastors, such as some of you, churches gather. Different churches are here, tapping anointed. And Satan is watching me look nice like this. And my wife is nice, and my children are nice. You think it's easy? Even 10 members, look at what you're struggling. Nothing is easy to impact people, open the eyes of men, release power, and everybody go and is testifying. I went and miracles are happening. Having to be hearing testimonies. And I'm still walking fine like this. My friend, there are spiritual laid down procedures. Engage in covenant sacrifice and escape the harassment of the enemy. The Bible says Abraham went for the slaughter and he had breakthrough in ministry. And when he was coming, he met prophet Mechizedek. And he says, Sir, wait for me. Can I give you a prophetic tithe? The Bible says, and Abraham, Genesis 18, the Bible says, Abraham gave him tithe of all. He carried everything and gave to Mechizedek. And God blessed Mechizedek. And Mechizedek said to Abraham, You are now a possessor of the land. You are now a custodian of this land. You will not mess up. The Bible says when he left, the king of Abimelech, the king of Philistine, came to fight him. He said, listen, you can't fight me. I have lifted my hands to God already. I have the covenant with God. I have made prophet Mechizedek. I have settled the matter. You can't touch my family. The Bible says Abimelech took the wife of Abraham, wanted to sleep in with him at night. An angel appeared to Abimelech and said, are you mad? Are you mad? Do you know what you want to touch? Listen, this is a man that has lifted his hand to me. He has given me sacrifice. You want to touch his wife? If you touch his wife, I will kill you. From today, I have locked up all the womb of your children. No, none of you will give birth until Abraham pray for you. Hear me, sir. The Bible says everybody was barren until Abimelech went to Abraham and begged him, sir, so you are a prophet and you didn't tell us. So you carry power like this and you didn't tell us. So it's your wife and you, we beg you pray for us. Abraham said, Nina. Everybody say, God forgive them. God forgive them. Abraham was not a prophet. But because he gave to a prophet, he also became a prophet. There are men of God, not only me, oh, you must give to your prophetic father, but there are other men of God. God wants you to have their provisions. God will speak to you to go and so see to them. When you hear, obey. Obey. If you have to travel to go to the, where they are, travel. That is the only way you can fly. Do you know how many times I've traveled and fly to Boligatanga just to go and give offering? Do you know how many times I fly to Shiloh, just to go and drop offering at the altar of Papua Yudipo. Sometimes, don't you hear that when, sometimes I speak like Papua Yudipo. Yeah. Don't you hear I speak like him? I have a sympathetic. Why? Because I will go to Shiloh. I will put 5,000 US dollars. Sometimes God will tell me 7,000. It's not because I have money. I was poor when I started it. And today I'm seeing the mightiness of God. Yeah. I go to Pastor Isu's program. And Pastor Isu, you know Pastor Isu don't cost more offering. How many of you have gone to Pastor Isu's program before? And he called for 1,000 Ghana cities. Where does he call from? 100,000, 50,000. Sometimes you can call 500,000. 500,000 Ghana cities, Pastor Isu. And you think these fathers are mad. Why are they calling this big offering? And some of us, in Boliga, even in Boliga, you'll be calling 100,000 Ghana cities in Boliga. And sometimes me, I'm always in front. And when he's calling and you're in front, you think it's easy to sit in front? As you're sitting in front like this, I'm about to call. <laughs> As you're sitting in front like this, you are the one I'm about to call. Yeah, you can't sit in front if you're not ready for front. <laughs> Somebody say front. You must front your front. Once you sit in front, you must front your front. But I issued 100,000, 200,000. In Bolivar, go and watch some of his video. If you online, sometimes you'll be calling $10,000. And people 
will be sowing. Go and ask 100 Ghana in your fellowship. <laughs> Why? Because you have never released a covenant sacrifice before. So you don't deserve it. You have never done a covenant sacrifice before. You want to take sacrifice from people. What you sow is what you reap. You've never sowed before. You want to reap it. You think God is a criminal God? No. You see me do ministration and call for offerings and people are coming. And you think it's just a, a mouth. Go and, go and do some. Go and say something in your fellowship. If you see anybody again in your church in the next day, if you like, go and try. Go to your fellowship, ten people, and ask those who can give hundred thousand Ghana cities. <laughs> now, so you use your mouth to kill the church that same night. Go to Ashen Chapel. One Ashen is holding uh, this conference. What's the name? Impact. Impact yeah. Do you know how much offering they are calling? Fifty thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars, and you sit there and you are. Those who are doing it, go and see the way God is blessing them. Bishop James, sir, the kind of offering they are calling. Go to Prophet Anasai Church. Go and see the kind of offering they are asking. Why these men are men who have sacrificed? Prophet Anna said he's a, he's a strange giver to Bishop Oedipo. The guy has given one million dollars before. What a sacrifice have you given before? One million dollars. Do you know how much Prophet Anna have given to Pastor Isu? Do you know how many secret, how many seed Prophet Hubert Angel have given to Pastor Chris? You are sitting here calling me your father. You think you're a father like that? So for the handkerchief next to you. Shia. Somebody said I hear you, sir. Copy hundred billion be brave. Oh guy me oh. I mean take a credit, I mean take a grand chow. Amen. The alabaster boss must be broken. I see the levels you go. See the levels. Everybody that comes to Jesus is supposed to be born again first. Then you go to water baptism. Is that not so? Then you will you'll be trained. Then you go to Sunday school. Meboa. Acha and Sana Waba by your elder by Edik. Meboa. Mel Madeline. Did he, did he go to Sunday school? No. 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 Mary Madeline. Did he go to Sunday school? Was he baptized? Even training, training, Kurana disciples, we had trained him for three years. Was he trained for one year? No. The same day, Mary Madeline carried offering to the seed of, to the feet of Jesus. Jesus gave her position in the ministry. The same day, look, put it there for me, put it there for me. Put it there for me, if you are there, put it there for me. The same day, Mary Madeline was given position in ministry the same day. An office was created for Mary Madeline. And Jesus made an announcement. He said, from today, wherever they mention my name, they should mention this woman's name. Why? Because of sacrifice. What do you mean? for now doubt. No more trimonia de. What bumpires are contactia? 10 years, 20 years. Some of you have started ministry a long time ago. But yet you are not seeing anything. Nothing. One of the secret covenant prayer and fasting material details in Meboa. Then covenant so winning aggressive. Giddy giddy o wenu nyan me ya ya wa babra o. O be kwa sore ni by force. Sister wa ma wu wu. Me hu yan si a boat wenu wu bra sore na me nyan ba o. Did you know the strategy Jesus brought? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
If you don't come to heaven now, you, be, you enter to hell. Repent now. Up to now, heaven has not come. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. I hear you, sir. Master, I'm preaching crock crock of fool. I'm preaching crock crock of money in your option. And stress you. Sending come home. Messiah, there, baby. And come for my ceremony, my new. So I told you, my one day is more than five years. Somebody shout, I hear you, sir. Sister, Jesus Christ, my God, Jesus, Jesus, my God. Sister, you are an answer for Shashen Wu. You are the same as Brian Bompire. I'm not talking to somebody here. Bra, <laughs> Amen. We want to meet our was saying Papa, 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 Papa. We Papa, 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 then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, very what? And did what? And anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Go ahead. John chapter 12. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, we should betray him. Why was this Why was this ointment sold for, for 300 pence and given to the poor? Why was it not sold for 300,000? And the other, just said, in the poor, didn't it? This is said. This is said. Not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. To acquire a crown for. See, can you remember when we were there? We are now outside the castle. We are going to turn in from there and come here for. Verse seven. Uh -huh. Then said Jesus. Then Jesus said, "Let her alone. alone. Again, the, the day, day of my burying, had she kept this. Go ahead. Verse eight. For the, the poor. poor hey, for the first time, you. Jesus preached nonsense message. For the first time, Obi Pa for them. Yes, we can't say my one name. Look at the kind of revelation Jesus said. Because Jesus came for the poor. But Jesus spoke a certain truth. For the poor always he have with you. But me he have not always. Ah, how can Jesus say, I'm here for the better man? That's why you're here, you know, I'm here, you're a bit of Go and check the new apostles. When they came into the prophetic and they went to walk in the anointing, Bible said, 
We are not cotton as I see what is Oh, pardon. Take it to crowd, I cross off for being asked. You have not sacrificed anything before. That's why you are not saying here. Offer. We be in our bank. We know why you. Abraham know you poor thing. We never pay work on so. Never pay work on so. So Abraham, never pay work your orphan. Then you are money never. Abraham, you are just my. As we are busy, we are not worried. We are tamay. Tamay is bad and is quiet. Because a person who enters to ministry, the human I will know. For the poor, verily, verily, I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that but this woman had done be told for a memorial of her. Matthew twenty-six. <laughs> Adia oba we are for dey na abon. Be be e be kan yan yan so we are see na. Monka. Up to now e dey ho preach Mary Magdalene. O jaman for about say Mary Magdalene. Afodi enti e bo ni dey preach. Be memorial. When check Abraham sacrifice. Isaac sacrifice. David sacrifice. Solomon sacrifice. Solomon was anointed but before he sat on the throne sacrifice. David was anointed before he sat on the throne. Sacrifice. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before he sat on the throne. Saul was anointed before Verse six going, Saul has to be given the same thing. I'm not yet anointing David because I'm anointing David when he feel not David in Christ for the baby, I'm Christ in the young Christ sacrifice. Yeah, I didn't pick it. You're anointing to be another pastor, someone so come with them. Obi anointing so many can know. You're such a man, I pick them so come with them. To one in America, create a scene. Oh, the throne. I couldn't even feel. Maybe I saw it. Na sorry nya yare. Na o ma sorry nya revelation she. Yen ko fred David mra. Ye ko fred David na oba na ne papa. Se mm, yen ko himfie kwa. Ye kura for the book. Na ne papa man the same thing e man me yansa. Why? Bread and a sheep. No che chere no so se fa ko. Bible says sorry to us ah. Because before sana Saul e bet na konya no so. Sa for the na obo ya yansa na obi break it to. En tu fish obi di akunya 60 years in ohu bida. One day, what you can say is a small boy, Biba, who could have wine, who could have bread, who could have sheep. So I said, Hey, why me? Because you anointed David, no, no. He never heard that David had been anointed to be then his replacement. But when he saw the covenant, when he saw the sacrifice, from that day, not David is so, 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 time because who said, No, we'll be able to take it. Listen, you cannot occupy the office. If you have not given covenant seed sacrifice before, what your papa men yet? Now the famous so be we are we for window no more. I quite now face You will be exposed. A whole mighty Jesus, our heaven, dada. What the left side? So a person better now right. And you know I say, I'm here catching. Sorry for your better now. Simple equation. Jesus is sitting on the left side. And you want Jesus to come and sit on the right side. They just tell him, Jesus, my son. Now the devil who was sitting on my right side is not here. And you have been sitting here for a long time. Now I trust you. Please, can you move from the left? Come and sit on the right. God said, no. In this our realm, there is a certain platform. Blood must be seen. Sacrifice must be given. If you have not given me anything, you can't sit here. In my own office, you must give me something before you come. What I want is blood sacrifice. If you want to come and sit here in this throne, give me blood. What can I say? Yes. I'm going to say myself for the And I'm going to say myself for the sake. Yes, we're going to be with you. Yes, we're going to be with you. 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 Jesus didn't buy us from Satan.
Why na yesu to ye free nsam? Who did Jesus purchase us from? No tua ye tri kanu e de ma hwan. Ono ane ba mpo age ni moja. Ama na tua ka. Wo a wo ye na wo fa ase. Wo de men fa wo ho agene na be yeso betena ho. Tina wa bo mu sa wa ko bo mpa ye sa. Why you fasting no? Why you be obey be a? Men so still ni pa ma. Ni ma nko so. En kom se ya wo se e bia na obi se. And so, Nippon, your testimony, I would end your map. And some of our captain called Fossi would declare Quacuna Quentu, where Nya or Quire Granny Dinano. The presence will not come, the angel will not come, the office will not be granted to you, the defense will not be given, the provisions will not be in place. If you lack this four covenant I've given you. The covenant of sacrifice start with prophetic covenant to your prophetic father, which your father can ask you. A man of God can be led in the spirit. I will tell you what you should do. And if you obey and do it, you will see the power. Covenant, prophetic covenant, it also by when the Holy Spirit has spoken to you to go and see a certain man of God, to go and see a man that is breakthrough somewhere. Prophetic covenant also is when God will speak to you to go and donate something to widows and orphans. Prophetic covenant seed, no. And yet, so from one edge, you sometimes you must go to widows, you must go to orphans, donate to them, and see what will happen. And see what will happen. And see what will happen. And what is now? I hope I have opened your spirit up into mighty things. Amen, sir. May the Lord bless you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, clap your two hands and give Jesus praise. Yes, sir. Look for some orphanage house. Look for some poor people. Widows as a prophet. And take care of them. And see what will happen. Take a sacrifice offering. Go and give to your father. See a certain man of God you want to operate in his anointing. You see yourself in his ministry. Look for him. Don't trust the little, little prophecy you are seeing. And the miracles you are seeing. You may be stuck there forever. So for, what is it? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I'm going to stand still. We are Adventists. We are Adventists, Ankasa. As the need. Wow. Now can't so far so far no whole fellow. Yeah. Now can so whole fellow whole fellow. Set them in an amp show. It is a semi-pa. Must I not come across some more? Yeah. Must you feel quiet? Wow. And Tina, or else you show me on a whole fellow. Tell my miss take you to TV, you know. Let me show the beer. I'm sure the beer. I'm so no, Papa. I wasn't going to. Come on, We will fight. Ah, and to me, didn't much have a toy in tea on the water. Oh, come on, Amen. Go and check the disciples and apostles. What they did. Bible says some of them sold their house just for ministry. Be cotton as I say. For your human. Now, I deal with your human. Say, Oh, mock at that. When you move, we are said that. Oh, be in one man, you may sacrifice and one channel. Just one year, two years, you will see what will happen. What's our ministry? Edo. Paul said it. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 17. He said, The things you sent to me, sweet smelling greetings, odor of a sweet smelling, I've received them. Because of that, my God shall supply. Also, I know could choose verse 19. No? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches. 17 at this point in the Bible. No? You won't forget it. You think God supply when you have not so? When you read it, Philippians chapter 4, it started from 16, 17, 18, 19. When check Cornelius. Cornelius, when you suffer, on quite sorry. What empower covenant prayer? And covenant giving, these two. Or Pompey, no mercy. Or Pompey, Acts chapter 10, verse 1. Meboa. Pompey, no mercy. Pompey, no mercy. A whole God, at me smart angel, but a qua on qua sorrow. Whoa, I saw who qua sorrow in there. Angel crown with that. Catch us a seed, you release the angels. Would you all eat to know? Cornelius on qua sorrow. On G. Holy Ghost, who crane the year. Now, am I talking to somebody here? The guy is not born again. He's not in the church. But he has heard about things. He know about covenant things and he started doing it in Acts chapter 10 verse 1. He started praying. He started giving. The Bible says, and his prayer and his arms has come as a memorial in heaven. An angel will release physically to come and speak to Cornelio. Ya pacho so mama omun ko jopa en ko fro di for mra na on fa nsa me gusu na do mon mra so enje ni firi wa en o se firi on ko peter o no ga che peter se ya pacho nyame aka kire papa bi obo fode ma afode na kanyame on kwa sori de en so nyame se masa we are so to me bo fode na nyame age afode bo no na wo shira wo mo na wo ti wo unye donation da so fu mo Unye donation da, unko chen kwa la di da, usu yu di fo. Unko ofa ne di da, usu tu mi tosi u shine one. No a tosi tu na di a you read a bomb. No a dressing am. Masa, Cornelius, wa ba for di a bomba ye to this covenant. Angel have been released. The frail almighty apostle Peter. It to me to car ever born pyre my just one family. And when we receive Holy Ghost impartation. One family. Ya yam partition service. For the bounty. What do you tell us? And now so far about the over for them about special prayer amount. And yeah, they are starting you. Peter when they start here. Hey. Hey. The Penifoni and I miss me again. Massa, also, son, I'll be here because a German Musan at here. One car, amen. On your bed, Drumma, sir. But there are some people you will call them and do special things for them. Yes, sir. Because they have solved the problem of God. Sankrofono, almost solving your problem. So when they solve God's problem, God solved their problem. Everybody count. Amen. Everybody shout. Amen. Everybody pigeon. Amen. 